cervical cancer is one of the commonest cancers in women in India. In fact, currently it is second common cancer affecting women of India and probably India has the highest prevalence of cervical cancer in this part of Asia. In a body of a woman and the mouth of uterus is called cervix. And when the cancer inflicts the mouth of uterus, then we call it cervical cancer. Causes for the cancer will remain universally, more or less, there are high risk factors. But there are some very specific high risk factors for cervical cancer occurrence. So there are certain high risk factors which make a woman more prone to develop cervical cancer. And these include early age of sexual activity. And as we know in India, many girls get married even below 18. And that is how prevalence in India is higher than other countries around. It is also earlier childbirth. It is also having sexual activity with multiple sex partners, which predisposes one to cervical cancer. And even for cervical cancer, all these things, smoking, tobacco use, excessive use of alcohol, all these remain risk factors for cervical cancer. But one important risk factor is poor local hygiene, personal hygiene, as well as HPV infections. The high risk HPV infections have been identified to be associated with higher occurrence of cervical cancer. Basically, there are almost 200 types of papilloma virus, the HPV infection, but some have been identified as high-risk HPV, which include HPV 16, 18, 1 and 6. In India, majority of cervical cancers have been found to be associated with HPV 16 and 18 infection. And commonest cause for its transmission is sexual intercourse. So that is why we say that if we need some protection also, that should be given before the sexual activity starts so that they are prevented from getting HPV infection. In our country, women are, as it is shy, they also have a culture of silence. When they suffer also, they are feeling shy to talk to their husbands or their sons or somebody. So one important factor which we need to create is awareness about it. Many women take any menstrual irregularity as granted. They feel, oh, maybe I am approaching menopause. That's why my periods are not coming properly and all. But any abnormal bleeding, any bleeding in between periods, any bleeding on straining or after intercourse should be treated as abnormal. They must report and get checked. Sometimes they may be just having excessive discharge locally and it may be sometimes very foul smelling also but they just keep feeling shy and keep ignoring it so that could be a feature of that. Other cancer symptoms like loss of weight, loss of appetite and all come much much later in cervical cancer because it is growing locally. Another peculiar thing about cervical cancer is it has a very long pre-cancer stage when they may be even asymptomatic. So they may not even know that they are developing something which may later on result in cervical cancer. And that is why screening plays a major role in cervical cancer prevention. As I already mentioned, there is a long pre-cancer stage from Infection of HPV or precancer, it may take any time from 3 to 10 years for the actual cancer to develop. So if women are aware of these things, if women can avoid 
early marriages or early sexual activity, multiple partners protect themselves from HPV infection by getting vaccinated, and a good personal hygiene which prevents a lot of local infections because all sexually transmitted infections also predispose them to high risk of cervical cancer. And last but not the least, periodic screening of all women who are sexually active. We recommend that by the time they start activity, they must get screening done at least once in every three years. And this screening is done by a small, simple test, which is called a pap test. And every woman actually should be aware about pap test. Very interestingly, we surveyed women coming to even high class hospital that how many are aware of what is a pap test and awareness was less than 30%. And about 10% only had had pap smear in their lifetime when they came. So it's very, very important that all women are aware that something called pap test, which is a very simple test, which can be done on the OPD basis, can pick up abnormal cells and it's a painless test. It is not painful or anything. They just need to give a sample which is tested under the microscope to see precancer abnormal cells and sometimes even on pap test they may be asymptomatic and you diagnose that they have frank cancer so it's always good to get pap test screening done by all married women till the age of at least 65 another thing which we said is hpv infection HPV infection risk is quite high in our country, reported to be anywhere from 70 to 80 percent. Majority of these women will clear their HPV infection and cease to be at risk. But if their HPV infection persists beyond age of 30, then they must worry. So after 30, we also advocate the screen for presence of HPV virus in their cervical smear. Nowadays, we recommend dual testing. <coughs> Get cytology plus HPV tested if you are not already vaccinated. As I already said, if there is irregular intermenstrual bleeding, if there is a postcoital bleeding, bleeding after intercourse, if there is some foul smelling discharge, and if there is pain then they should consider getting tested definitely but otherwise for go for universal screening even if they are asymptomatic when we examine what are we looking for if we we do what is known as a per speculum examination now this is also a painless examination you just expose the cervix and look at it and if you find that cervix is bleeding on touch, there is some growth and some growth which is friable or when you palpate the cervix, it feels little hard, irregular or there is some tenderness when you are examining her, then you suspect that maybe there is some precancerous or cancerous lesion on the cervix. Good personal hygiene is very, very important. Protecting yourself from sexually transmitted infection. So taking care of your sexual activity also. And of course, protecting yourself from HPV infection by timely vaccination. All these and then screening. All these are going to help you. And one thing I must share with you. Cervical cancer is one of the cancers which is amenable to early diagnosis. If timely screening is done and the earlier it is diagnosed, prognosis is much, much better. They can be treated. They can have a good five-year survival. So they need not be scared. There are some women who think there is something wrong with me. 
but they still keep sitting at home oh if they detect a cancer i'll be are if you're having cancer in body it is better to get it detected and get it treated Overall, they calculate, irrespective of all stages, about 40 to 50 percent will survive five years. But then if we are treating them in stage one or two early stages, then survival rate may be as high as 80 percent. While if they are coming to you very late in sta advanced stage three or four, then survival goes down to 10 to 15 percent. One is, of course, we are associating cancer cervix with some high-risk HPV. So, there are different kinds of vaccines targeted to these high risk. There may be an, many other HPV infections against which we don't have vaccine yet. You will hear de in details about there are bivalent, there are quadrivalent, there are pentavalent, there are nonavalent vaccines against nine high risk viruses, but not all HPV. So the risk still remains. Besides, there are many other factors which could be causing. So even when they are vaccinated, screening has to continue. In CA cervix, there is not so much of stigma per se associated, but many women, as I said, they may have a lot of discharge, which may be foul smelling discharge. So the family may shun them, may not interact with them. They're not coming out what is happening to them, but because of the smell, many people may not like to go near them. If somebody says, we know it is not contagious cancer, it is not something which is being transmitted in the family and all. So, per se with cervical cancer, there isn't much stigma attached. People do come forward to declare, I had CA cervix, I had CA cervix stage so and so, I was operated or I received radiotherapy or whatever.